Good morning everyone. I hope you're all well. Today we've got a little bit of a different video. We've had a few requests to go through what we've changed in our travels. So what's broken, what we've changed or upgraded for some reason, and generally what hasn't performed well. Because we've been traveling for three and a half years, nearly four now. Nearly four years. So we kind of, yeah, we've got the gist of what goes wrong. So it's in no particular order, but we will break it up into caravan and truck. But within those categories, we're just going to go through We've got a list here on the computer, and we're just going to go through each item that we've either altered, changed, broken, or upgraded. And we'll go from there. We just thought it will help you guys out, because you'll probably come up to some sort of similar issues in your travels. And if there's a particular video we've created toward that thing, I'll put it in the description up the top for you to access the link. I'll also put those into a playlist. Okay, first thing on the list, on the caravan, we upgraded our battery capacity from 300 ampere hour lithium batteries to 600. When we originally built the van, we went for the option of as much solar panels as we could put on the roof and we'd see how the 300 ampere hour of lithium went. Well, we know for sure it's not really enough for us. No. no. When you get those longer overcast um, times, like one week of rain, with 300 amps, we were struggling by the end and we sometimes had to use our generator. Alternatively, if you've camped under trees because you've got no other choice, you only get a few days out of 300 amps worth of lithium, or we did anyway. So the 600 amps of lithium is great. We actually sold our generator, got rid of that, and we haven't had that for a year now nearly, yeah, and we've had no, yeah. no need to use it. So we can handle um, 600 amps of lithium just fine, and it suits us to a T. We do have um, about 800 amps of solar. Next on our list, our pull-out kitchen outside has got large access hatches, so you open them obviously to pull your kitchen out to cook on. We found that if it rained and you happened to be cooking or you're doing a roast and you couldn't pack it away, because our awning does not cover our pull-out kitchen, our external kitchen, that rain would go into the hatch or alternatively midges and mozzies and they'll get under our bed. Sand. Yeah. Sand fires. <laughs> Not sand. Oh. <laughs> would blow in. <laughs> oh, sand would blow in too. And um, they'd obviously get their way through into the van. So what we made up or had made up was a cover that attached on the inside of the door with zippers. Um, and that has worked really well. So that stopped rain, sand, midges, dust, and all that sort of crap when you're at camp. Along with the, uh, when we had our our flap made up for our pull-out kitchen, we also had another little mod done. So the awning flap is like a little V that Carl had made. We put it on the sail track on the awning and it just helps tension everything down to our, our, our poles. Yep. And it's been great in the wind. Because we had a, an electric awning on our van, we really used to struggle with wind. It was terrible in wind. As soon as there was a bit of wind, we'd have to pack it back in. But now with this awning flap with our poles under it, it is great in the wind. One of the best things that we've done is install a fan into our fridge. Yeah, so we had big problems with our fridge cooling and we went to Carl's Cool, which we've done a video on this, and installed external fans so it helps circulate the fan past the air past the back of the fridge and an internal fan in the fridge and it has it changed that fridge completely. It saved the fridge's life. Yeah, it did. <laughs> saved my life too, because the fridge was going out. And we would have had to spend a few more grand to replace it. And so this has done incredibly well. And it has never, ever, and it's never, ever warmed up. It's never even come close. No, 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 no. So it's no, perfect. It's been fine. Perfect. It only stops working when I accidentally shove something in the fan. Yeah, and stop the fan on the inside. <laughs> my bad. Yeah, bad. <laughs> Our water in our van is all controlled by valves. And the type of valve, it's called a John Guest uh, inline valve. It's a little blue valve, you'll see it. 
and all of our water control and tank selection is done by these valves. They're quite a common valve in caravans. We found after about three years of use, they started to not leak, but not function correctly. Like the valve wouldn't turn all the way on and off anymore. It become less and less and stiffer and less and less. In the end, one of them broke because I was just turning it off. So we've gone ahead and replaced all of those valves. They're about 20 bucks each. And we've got about, I don't know, 15 of them in the van. So it's not a huge expense. But now they're back to all nicely operating yep. with no more issues. I didn't think that they would wear out that quick. But bear in mind, we do live in our van full time. We use it every single day and so on. So for a lot of people that just use their caravan, you know, a few times a year, they will probably never ever wear out in the life of the van. But in our case, they were wearing out. We've replaced them, they're all good now. And it's an easy job, they just push in and out essentially. And we now have a couple of spares. Yep, we've got a few spares for breakages. <laughs> We had some alterations done on our pantry cupboard because I like to have lots of food and it was a bit of a disaster, stuff stacked on each other and all sorts. So we just had some extra shelves put in so that everything wasn't stacked high on it. Piled it up. Piled yeah. up. And then we also added a charging bay that slides out and so all all everything that we charge goes in there yeah it's great it's really good put it all in there close the door shut the door and it's all neat and tidy yep. out of eyesight all so. the cords live in there yep. so that works really well for us another video that we created was about our hatches yep which you're probably aware so our roof hatches we had just opening hatches of various designs we got rid of those suckers for sure and we've installed we've got it running right now it never stops a Max Air Deluxe fan in here and it just constantly sucks air out and we love it. You can just leave your windows open a little bit in say the bedroom if there's bad weather and you can turn the fan up and if it's humid it'll just suck the air over you when you're in the bed and out here. Super good if you burn the toast or something turn it on flat out sucks it all out yeah. so we've been very happy with that. We have used it a couple of times to actually blow air in just to cool it down a bit mm. uh, and also be aware that if it is sucking uh, when it's raining, it can sometimes suck so hard it pulls water into the windows. Yes, it does. So yeah, just keep an eye on that, but it's, it's still, yeah, it's ace. It's great. The one downfall from it is since we run it 24 hours a day essentially all the time, it gets dirty. There's no two ways about it. You've got to clean it every week and it gets filthy. It looks filthy right now. Yeah. But um, the same with the one in the shower. We put a much better fan in the shower and that is so good as well. Yeah. Um, the downside to that is it's still got one of those opening hatches. So last night when it rained, we had it open and of course the water comes in. But um, the Max Air one, it's got a rain hood. Doesn't matter whether it's pouring, doesn't matter. It just works great. When we had the pantry altered, we also had my my bedroom cupboard altered because I was finding that having hanging clothing, there was no point because everything was just crinkled because there was so much just crammed in there. <laughs> Jammed in. Jammed. So I got some shelves put in and now I just roll all my clothes and have all my clothes in there. And it's much better. And I can fit more. And I just went with the hanging because yeah. I like the hanging. Yep. And my shirts do still get crinkled, but anyway, I just shoved them in. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Years ago now, when we first ordered our caravan from Bush Tracker, I had some discussions with them about the front lifting leg. Now, the lifting leg, which is like a, our jockey wheel, is an electric leg, and it used to hang down about, I don't know, 150 millimeters below the A-frame. And I wasn't very happy with that, because I figured as soon as you drag the A-frame, it's going to rip off. Well, apparently they never have had any problems with it until we come along. Probably because they, most people <laughs> tend not to drag their A-frame, but anyway. In, in Flinders Ranges <laughs> a couple of years ago, we ripped the leg off and bent it and so on. So what I have now done, which works really good for us, is I have spaced it up with a spacer so that that leg does not hang down when it's fully retracted. It is up inside the caravan A-frame rails so even if you go over a hump or through a riverbed or a washout and you drag that, it doesn't get damaged. Or 
for instance, you may get bogged. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't get damaged because it's up out of the way. I do have to put a block of wood or I use a jacking pad underneath it to get a bit of extra height now because it's a bit higher. But apart from that, it works great. So I just had that machined up from a machine shop somewhere in South Australia, I think. Got some longer bolts and added it in and it's been good ever since. So that might be something for you to consider if you've got an off-road van. You don't want anything hanging down on your A-frame because you will drag it and it will get bent or broken off. Not too long ago, we had an issue we didn't even know with the solar panels on the van. I was up there one day, I think I got up on the truck to hose them off like I normally do if I've got water, and I looked across and one was all smashed. It was all smashed, all the glass was all broken, and um, we don't know when it happened. We have found rocks on the roof of the van before, presumably from the truck. If you go off-road or on, you know, stony, gravelly roads, they somehow get up there, believe it or not. So all I can think of is a rock has flicked up from the truck, come back down, smashed a panel, and can't do anything. You can't replace the glass. So we re had it replaced when we were getting serviced at Bush Tracker. And believe it or not, our solar worked a lot better. So I don't know how long it had been broken for. I'd say a long time. But we'd been missing one panel for some time. Um, so... That was just wear and tear, essentially, but that's something to keep an eye on with your solar panels on your van. Get up there every now and again and have a quick look. Make sure they're all okay. okay. Uh, rear grey water tank. Mm. Well, that goes along the lines of not having things hang down. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. I suppose so. Going along those lines of things hanging down, like we are talking about before, we've had issues with our grey water tank outlet. From the very start it hasn't worked well for us at all the tank is a 90 litre tank and it's got a small elbow that comes out of it at right angles well, it's an elbow obviously and that little elbow used to get blocked all the time with hair and soap and everything so i was forever fishing around in there with a wire to unblock it and also it went right to the back of the van on the frame rails and hang down essentially super exposed every time we drag the van through a creek bed or something the poor little tap will get bent and ripped off and i don't know it wasn't working for us so finally in the end i've moved it all back i've done it a couple times now but i've done it again better mm -hmm. put a big and large solid valve that doesn't leak because the other ones always used to leak as well and got rid of all of that system put a bigger outlet nice elbow and now, touch wood, it's much, been great. Much better. Hasn't yeah. been blocked since. Yeah. But we haven't tested it for a long time. We've only had it in there for probably a few months. Yeah. And then still staying on the water situation, our, for some reason, our water system works randomly, doesn't it? It just sets itself off the pump. There, there must be a little internal leak where it, the water pressure drains out from the pump somehow. There's no leak in the system, but maybe it goes back through the pump, or maybe all the valves added up because there's so many valves. You know, maybe it's just got a tiny little internal pressure leak. But what happens in the middle of the night? It just goes, Bzip! and that that's fine. You know, Carl's used to it, I think. But when I'm asleep, I'm deep asleep, and then it'll go, Bzip! and I'll go. Bzip! because the pump's under our bed. <laughs> and wake him up. So it, it, we yeah. needed a solution because otherwise Carl was going to kill me. So <laughs> he's put a little switch on the toilet that controls it. And when we go to bed, we just turn off the water system. And yeah. if we need to get up in the night and go to the toilet, it's right there to turn back on. Yeah. So. so it just essentially turns the pump off so the pump can't run no matter what the pressure's doing because it's an automatic pump. As soon as the pressure drops, or the hot water service uses a little bit of water and tops up because it's been heating overnight or something, um, it won't turn on anymore until you turn that switch on on the toilet, yep. and then it's good. So that works really well for us. Because yes. we could not find, I could not stop that that little leak. No. It takes, sometimes it Tried takes, I don't know, 15 minutes, sometimes it takes four hours. <laughs> so I just couldn't find it. Yeah. So that's my solution, and it works really good. Yes, yes. Going along the theme with leaking and leaks, <laughs> our airbags and airbag system has had some problems from the start almost. 
it's an active system there's lots of components so it is more complex than just springs and so on so you will get some problems if you have an airbag system we love it and i'd still get the same style of airbag and everything that's fine but you just have to live with it one of those things was we had moisture in the air system um, i didn't drain it often enough when we were stuck for six months up in victoria up in the hills and there was some moisture in there and it damaged the auto load leveling valve it's a valve that just controls the height of the van when you're on the road it's just presets it so it doesn't matter how much weight you put in there or anything it's just the same height always so i had to replace that and um that was only after six months we had the van and then some time later because there's two of them one for each side i replaced the other one it was possibly damaged from the same moisture as well so they've both been replaced now and they're fine along with that we have also had to replace two airbags both under warranty so both had leaks from not our doing from new essentially um, the first one had a really slow leak it took poof, months to go down and i tracked it down in the end to the actual airbag itself it was leaking out of the top of the crimp around the top of the airbag so i replaced that with another airbag and guess what <laughs> still going down i'm like what is going off here <laughs> the replacement airbag had some weird leak out of the bottom i'm like oh my gosh what's the chances <laughs> of that but anyway they were both replaced under warranty by airbag man which is good i just had to i actually had to purchase the airbag first send the other one back in so they could confirm that it was a warranty claim yeah. And then they um, refunded me the money. Yeah, so that's which, all fine, which worked great. It was fantastic. And they were yeah, good yeah. And, and easy to deal with and, you know, tried very hard to, to sort out our issue for us. So good on them for doing that. Unfortunately, had to replace two airbags. None from punches. But, but we still would, we would still have them again. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no doubt about yeah. it. I know lots of people get told they're bad and yeah, but, all that. Oh, but yeah. They are like, so much up. better. Yeah. You pull up and you just level your van like that you know what i mean or if you're in your van and you've all your oil in the fry pans go on the one side you just lean over and adjust it up yeah. and everything's good yes so that that is really good yeah it gives you a lot more uh, scope where you can park your van too because with all the other caravan as a around if you're in a busy area they all go to the flat spots where you can just yeah. scoot over to the hill on the side and park up there and level it up and yeah it's all good so it gives you more scope for within that. reason yeah within reason. <laughs> i would wish that they would have double the travel that would be my thing <laughs> oh, so you can even You'd go see oh, us like this oh it'd be great <laughs> double the travel would be perfect so but anyway they've been very good and we're very happy with them yeah even though they do require maintenance yeah uh, the fridge the fridge when you when you stack your fridge you want to get as much as you can in there but if it all sits and rests on the back it sticks to the back. It freezes up to the back. Yeah, to the back wall where your cooling plates are or yeah. the wall is. So Carl actually put some corner strip stuff. Yep. He's going to have a technical name for it, I'm sure. The PVC edging it was <laughs> for, for uh, plastering walls. Yeah, so anyway. he's put that across the back of each shelf and it just helps prevent containers and things pushing against the back wall yeah. and freezing. And that works really well. It has worked Super very well. Super simple. Except for lettuce because somehow yeah, it always finds well, its way to the back. <laughs> yeah, just stick it on with silicon along the edge of your shelf we had glass shelves so they're quite slippery so we have a yeah. anti-slip mat and a lip on the back now yeah. and it works great it does yes so just a quick little tip yep. that you probably need if you don't have that on your back of your caravan shelf you definitely want it ah oh, the pump we had a a minor issue i think it was a defect from um the factory from the start somehow but anyway our water pump where it mounts on the on the wall sits in a rubber plastic bracket and um, it's screwed to the wall it's screwed to its bracket to absorb the vibration and all that sort of thing and for a long time i'm thinking why is the water pump so loose it was sort of quite floppy and i thought oh well maybe it come out like that well on the um old air highway the corrugations and the rocks we opened up the barbecue one day to pull it out <laughs> to cook and i'm like what's happened to the water pump it's all hanging off yeah. lucky it didn't break the hoses yes but anyway it was hanging off there so we we sorted it out for time being did a temporary fix and then replaced that um rubber mounting bracket and there's never been a problem again no so 
and I asked lots of people and they've never heard of one failing mm. so I think it might have been damaged or something maybe somebody dropped it and it broke you know it was broken behind the pump you couldn't really see it and yeah just failed in the end along with the water is our wastewater you may have heard um, us at the start when we picked up the van complaining about the bad grey water smell that we used to get every time we opened the door and we couldn't understand why really but we did work it out the water was or the the air and the smell was traveling back along the pipe and up out of the shower vent or not vent out of the shower drain and um, even sometimes the water come out if we had some in the tank and we went down a hill or up a hill whichever yes. way it was yeah. up a hill and the water sloshed forward we'd find gray water in the shower basin and then in their towels and ugh. so what we did is we just put a backflow preventer in it's just a little valve um, that stops it flowing the wrong way and since we did that we're very very well, i don't think we ever have had really gray water smell no, not and really we haven't either. had any water come back up into the shower it'll never come up into our sinks and that because they're way higher obviously but the shower since it's so low it could slosh back and we had a problem with that so since we've put that in it's been good and also part of my pack down is to i put the but the plugs in in the sinks so yep. there's just no smell can come yep. up so we always do that so, as well yeah. the only downside that you probably need to consider with one if you put it in your shower since the shower has got very low height difference between the the, the, sh the water outlet of the shower and the top of the tank that backflow valve does slow the water flow down a little bit so it doesn't quite drain out of the shower with the same speed that it used to. No. It's not a problem, but it's just something to be aware of and consider when you put it in. Because it does restrict the flow a little bit yeah. when you open, when you're draining the shower. Yeah. But apart from that, it's great. Yes. We like it. In the early days of being in the van, we were, as Carl said, stuck up in the wet weather of Melbourne. Up in the hills. Yeah. And being so damp, we ended up with mould. Mm. underneath our mattress we made a video on it and our simple solution for that was was the aero mesh we'll put a link in the description so that if you'd like to purchase some it's easy enough to get yeah and it works great all it does is it creates a little air barrier underneath your mattress we've got full wood under our mattress if you've got slats or something you won't have a problem because you can get airflow and all of that around but if you've got a solid surface the heat from your body and the moisture sits down there it condensates a little bit and you just get mold we also put the same thing in our rooftop tent because yep. it had exactly the same problem yep. and since we've put that in there no problem perfect i'd recommend it for any rooftop tent yeah for sure 100 yes. percent and every bed that's got a solid surface underneath my suggestion is that you definitely need the aero mesh or something similar yep. let's move on to truck Ooh. stuff Yay! Working up a sweat. Truck stuff. <laughs> we know you're here for this stuff. Yeah, we know. <laughs> so, no particular order again. Um, you're probably well aware that we have had two broken CVs on our truck. Um, it was, I believe it's a bit of a design issue. I didn't do anything wrong. Um, but Susan might argue against that. They replaced one under warranty and the other one I just replaced because we were stuck on Morton Island and I couldn't be bothered stuffing around with them. So. Had that replaced um, to help prevent the CV issue hopefully we've done two things um, the first thing is we put oh, I shouldn't say two things because the other one oh yeah the yeah I can say that what the hell to help prevent the CV issue reoccurring we've done well two things plus another we now carry spare CVs which is a pain because they're big heavy and cost a lot of money but we've got them second thing is we've extended our steering bump stops so the truck can't steer so sharp which will stop the stress on that drivetrain component hopefully so that's reduced it was very very good it was fantastic it was Turning incredible was great it was like a little <laughs> festiva you could turn like wherever you wanted to with the truck it was really good but it came at a cost and the cost was damaging CVs. So, in sand and yeah, stuff. I'm yeah. not even looking. Yeah. So we'll just live with a slightly less turning circle. It's still okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's like about as bad as a Nissan Patrol or a Land Cruiser, which are not great, yeah. but it's about the same now, so it's not terribly bad. Um, so hopefully that'll help. We haven't had any broken ones since. And the third thing we did was we replaced our auto biasing front differential, it's an all-terrain Warrior 1, with a locking diff, which is a, just a complete diff lock that locks or unlocks. So I can control exactly when that diff is locked and I know it and when it's unlocked. So I think that also helps because otherwise um, it's essentially almost locked all the time when you're in four wheel drive and you've got torque and so on, which will put more stress on the components. So I'm helping all of those things combine together. Hopefully no more broken CVs. Probably will be, but <laughs> no. <laughs> hopefully no more. So no, no. That, that's the first uh, big thing <laughs> on, on the on the truck. Um, another thing that we have done to help um, make us feel safer, it's both in the truck and the van, that you're probably aware of, is that we put GPS tracking on them. So that at least we can keep track of what's happened, if it gets stolen or um, if we're separated truck and van, we can keep an eye on where the other one is and we like that. That yeah. works really good. Yeah. I've got a video on that and we're very happy with that. We yeah. always look at it, if we go somewhere and leave the van, we keep an eye on what's happening. Yeah. And we have the alarm set so that if it moves or whatever, it'll send us messages all the time and we can track it. So And our children have access so they can check yep. where we are. They can get tabs on us. <laughs> <laughs> know what's happening. <laughs> um, along with the alarm system, we also recently have done rust proofing on the truck underneath, um, under body protection. We have done a video on that also. But um, the truck essentially, I didn't think it was up to standard is my actual opinion you know our truck's three and a half years old or four years and it was starting to rust the chassis was starting to rust some some of the underbody was starting to rust and so on even though we have used it near the beach um it still should be able to withstand that like seriously it's, it's done a years. lot more out back yeah, work than beach, beach work, work. So, so yeah so yeah we've we've did that to try and help um prevent that in the future if I knew about it before, I would have just got that straight away, is my advice to any new vehicle purchaser that's for off-road or yeah. near the beach. I'd just get it done brand new. Put it into your initial budget. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, a yeah. couple grand and you're yeah. done, and it's going to save that a lot. Eh? Yeah. So... Um, do you want to talk about tyres? Oh, I don't want gosh. to talk about tyres. We've had lots of problems with tyres <laughs> that you're probably aware of. But the bottom line is now that we are running uh, truck style tyres, um, we've had no more problems whatsoever. And we've also got that aluminium or alloy rims from Ultra and Warriors. And I believe that that is a really good combination for us. I would definitely, where possible, not have steel rims again. I think the alloy ones are much better. They run straighter. They're more in balance. And they're just less prone to issues, I believe. Won't rust and so on. We've had no problems with rocks damaging them. But anyway, that's my choice. There's lots of cons and, and pros for it. People will argue all day long about alloy versus steel. But they work well for us. That's and they're lighter. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, we get bogged easier. Oh, because now. of the... Yeah, there is more... Uh, mud pattern tyres now available. Yeah. When we purchased them, there was nothing really available except for what we got. Yeah, which we will be moving to different ones, obviously, yeah. when we replace. Yep, definitely. Ones, Get back so. to mud tyres. Yeah. That'll be great. With the... Along with the tyre issues, we also had lots of compressor issues. The ARB compressors that we originally had, which I thought was the best thing that I researched and could find, you can throw them away, I can tell you that right now. They did not work for us. We had failed twice yeah. rebuilt twice failed yeah. replaced with a brand new one and still couldn't perform yeah. they were just not up to the task not even close not even yeah. remotely close yeah. so we got rid of them and we got a oasis compressor from jet air yeah. and that saka has been magnificent yeah. it is oh, I would just put it in your budget from the start if you're looking for a truck. It'll blow your pants away. <laughs> it is so good, so fast, so everything. It's just in a different league. Yeah. We run air tools. Yeah. 
you can blow out, oh, I just blow out the cab with it. I don't sweep the truck out anymore. I blow out the canopy. It's just... And I don't know about anybody else, but when we used to go four-wheel driving, even back with our Nissan, at the end of the day, you just want to get home and you've got a bloody air up. All the... <laughs> and it takes an hour. And yeah. so now it's like... <sighs> Done. Oh, the truck is yeah. 15 minutes, less than 15 less, minutes yeah, for the truck. Yeah, yeah. And a truck and a van, our if record, we both do it, both do it is 15 minutes yeah, as well. Yeah. There's no difference because so, we've got two inflation gauges and two yeah. everything. 15 so, minutes for eight yeah, tyres. Yeah. Wow, it's incredible. Defeats my pet hate. Area yeah. Oh, it's so good. Nice <laughs> now that instead of going, ah, oh, we won't air down because we're not going far on the beach and having issues and having to air down anyway because you're bogged. Yeah. You just air down straight away because it's only minutes to pump it back up. Yeah. So, yeah, that's right. well worth it. And if you're looking to purchase a truck or something similar, <laughs> I would just completely allow for it at the start and don't even bother with anything else yeah. because it works so well. No, no. We also had an issue with... It was mostly my door uh, right from the beginning that it seemed to have airflow through it when it was shut. And it would sort of uh, vibrate when we were driving. On top of it. Yeah. yeah. And so Carl contacted Izuzu. Yeah. And it's a known issue, but they don't seem to fix it. They no. they just sent him the nuts to fix it himself. No, I, uh, I asked for him. I didn't oh, want to. Okay. They wanted me to take the truck in, oh, you know, yeah. book it in. Two days later, yeah. I have replaced six nuts, six yeah. bolts in the doors. I'm so like, nah. for all of you Izuzu people... Ring and get your nuts. <laughs> Just ring them up and get <laughs> ring your Ring and get your nuts and fix the problem because yeah. they're not going to. Yeah. So yeah, just ring up and get some new bolts for the door. Yeah. They just don't have a little shoulder to locate the door so you can adjust the door in and out and so on. Yeah. And it works fine. Yeah. It fixes the problem. Yeah. They might jump up and down a bit saying you've got to bring it in to, do you know what I mean? It's one. Just say, no, mate. Yeah. <laughs> just send me Just send me them and yeah. fix it yourself. Yeah. Got about 12 more things, 10 more things to go through. Um, the canopy. The whale tail door locks on the canopy, you know, the ones that you open and open your doors. We've constantly had problems with them. Um, I think because the truck's long, it might flex and put stress on the doors, and it just bends that little tab, the tongue, that locks it all the time, and they get looser and looser, and you have to adjust them, and then the nut strips off because it's poor quality and so on. And we do use them a lot. And we use them yeah, tons. Yeah, we use them, so. I don't know, 20 times a day. Probably, yeah. So, um, in the end, um, the manufacturer has upgraded the tongue, so that doesn't bend anymore. So that's great. <laughs> but we've found that the little nut still strips. It's a poor quality nut. I've changed the nuts to nice ones, but they still don't last. It's just the way the design is. So we have had issues with our style of the whale tail lock. I did look at other ones. I couldn't find anything that's a really sturdy design. So if you know of some <laughs> nice design whale tail style canopy locks that are super strong, please let us know. Yeah, I'll be interested be, in them. Be great. Because yes. we've still got issues with them. Yeah. We added a winch for our bike, which we made a video on. Uh, do we need to tell them about it? It was hard to lift up in yeah. the end. It was only 25 kilos, but very awkward. Yeah. I had to lift it to chest height to get it into the tray and then, you know, wiggle it in there. So we just made a swing out winch yeah. with a little If you're cheek. really interested, watch the video. Yeah. We're not telling it you works good. about it. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. That works great for us. Yeah. The tow hitch. We've had a few tow hitches <laughs> and we've finally got a tow hitch that performs really well for us yeah which is the air safe one it's miles ahead of the rest in my opinion yeah Most... and we're not sponsored by them yeah there's a bit of controversy about that we're not sponsored by them or anything like that yeah. it just works really well yeah it is much dearer than the rest but it works really well yeah. it actually is almost like we're not towing the van when we've got the van on there it is better yeah yeah super good yeah, yeah. i love it so anyway um, something else that has failed was our solar panels on the rooftop tent. We had a very high quality name brand flexible panel with all mounted correctly to their specs on insulation and so on. And they just literally short circuited out and burnt out internally. They shut themselves. Yeah. And they were <laughs> not very 
happy um, they weren't forthcoming. Mm. That was Safari. They were not forthcoming with warranty and they were not going to do it. And we had to really, really twist their arm mm. to get our money back on those panels. Yes. So in the end, they gave us our money back and we put some Victron solid glass panels on there and they worked. The system works. They're smashing it. Like, 50% better now, yeah. probably not yeah. 50, but uh, yeah. much notably better with those glass panels compared to the other mm. flexible panels that we had on there. So uh, knowing that now, I would never um, use flexible panels like that again if I could ever help it. Yeah. We have our little Kings one that we chuck out, you know, if we want extra power, fine, perfect, I think, you know. If it, then, yeah, if, if it yeah. fails, it yeah. doesn't matter. If we're in shade. Yeah, yeah. if we're in yeah. shade, we can put it out, that's yeah. fine. but. I don't think flexible, from our experience, yeah. flexible panels on fixed things like that, don't bother. Just go and get the real deal yeah. <laughs> and your system will work much better. And really, the solar on the truck has like been running two 80-litre angle fridges for three and a half, nearly four years. Without stopping. It's mad. Never, never, yeah. never yeah. plugged it in? No. Never done anything. It just does its stuff. Yeah. The only time you've got to be very careful is if you're under trees or if it goes in to be serviced yes. or repaired for a couple of days, they park it in the workshop. Well, it needs to be charged then, obviously, because there's no solar. Yeah. So that works super good. Next, getting there. Modified the side steps on the truck. The NPS trucks have the rear um, dual cab steps are very low. They were way too low for my liking, you know. I mean, as soon as you go over a little bit, they'll be bent, pushed into the batteries, and all badness. So we cut them a lot shorter. It's a lot harder to step up, particularly if you've got old passengers. Or short. Elderly passengers. Or short legs. Or short, short legs. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit harder to step up, but it's better than having them ripped off and bent yes. up. So. Yes. So we did that. It was a quick little mod. Yeah. Um, when, when we actually realised those steps were too long, and they would drag in the mud yeah. was when we also found that our mud guards hit our tires with the the 37s yep and it was like crunching i was recording it going oh look at that and it just crunched our guards yeah on our flares you're yep. talking about yep. so yeah yep. so that was an issue with 37 inch tires the wide 37s that is they're just too wide for the guards that we had from all train warrior they crunched up but they were replaced under warranty they were yeah also the rear plastic guard um the isuzu one that is um they're known to fail ours failed straight away it pulls through all the bolts they just vibrate and crappy and wobbly just a very poor design so they've been replaced under warranty on our truck by isuzu but to prevent that happening again i put some braces so I've braced the back corners back to the steps oh, yes. and I don't think they will break again because it takes all of that. Mm. They were so flimsy. They were just terrible. So I think they're going to be good now. Um, it's a super easy mod to do if you've um, got that style of guard yeah. and you've got a dual cab so that you can brace it back. Have we got a picture of that to put in there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's in there. We'll put a yeah. picture. So we'll show you that. <laughs> Next, quick, let's go. Quickly, our angle. After what, after what, two and a half years, one angle failed and they were great. They just replaced it. Yeah, they replaced the internal coil. They couldn't quite work out. It didn't fail completely. It had a partial blockage in the evaporator somehow. Somehow something has dislodged on the inside of it and caused a partial blockage of the gas. So that was all replaced under warranty. So they put a new everything. All new internals in the fridge, yeah, and that's just working fine now. So yeah, yeah. that was so good, good of angle. We were just out of our warranty yeah. period as well. Yeah, the old one had, I think, they were two years. The current, the same model now has three years. Yeah, so they they helped us out. They, yeah, they were very good. Yeah. <laughs> so next, solar shades. Carl's been shopping online. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. We had some solar. <laughs> solar. We had. Um, it all comes from one thing, which is the truck aircon is not very good in the dual cabs because it's the same size as the single cab. You can get a rear mounted aircon unit and install it, an extra one. We didn't want to pay the bucks for that. We uh, should have. Probably should have at the start, yeah. but we didn't. So we've always battled when it's warm. So to help that, we have now got solar shades on the rear windows and the back window yeah. to help with that temperature. We also added 
um, under four insulation, which we already did, but I've even extended it further now, right up the back wall, because that's just all single metal skin. So I've extended it right up the back wall to the roof to help with all of that as yeah. well. Yeah, and it also reduced uh, a lot of noise. Yeah. So it, it worked in two functions. So that was really yeah. good. So you definitely need to do something in those NPSs yeah. with your underfloor insulation yeah. um, and aircon because it just can't handle and it. And we've got a curtain on the way. So we're just going to block that back uh, yeah. cab off when we don't have anyone in it. So that'll uh, keep yeah. it cooler oh, as the well. The aircon will be great then, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so we have the fridge gas struts and I would have so much trouble trying to put the fridge back up once I'd loaded it because Fully loaded. it was too heavy. It's yeah. 80 litre fridge. Yeah. So. so we had stronger gas struts. Yeah. So I put double strength ones in and replaced it. So now we've actually got the opposite problem. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now they're so strong. <laughs> if, I the can't <laughs> if the fridge is empty, you have to hold it down <laughs> while you're putting stuff in the top of it because when you let it go, it just goes whoop, back up. And know. don't worry, we know it's a first world problem. But that's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So, uh, so we've we've sort of mucked around with that, but it's better going back up, I think, than you being unable to lift it up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so. absolutely. Truck battery holder. Truck battery. We had issue with the truck starter batteries. So they originally were two 75 ampere hour lead acid batteries, which is fine to start the truck, but it's not fine for the winch and our winch comes off that battery. So one of those batteries failed at two years, believe it or not. So we replaced them. Instead of putting the 75s in, we put 110 ampere hour batteries into that position, which means the battery holder was too short. So all I did was had somebody extend the sides. We put a bigger tray, essentially. Yep. There's enough room. And now we can put the bigger size battery in. The winch is much happier. Yep. And the truck starts fine, of course. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's um, what we've done there. With the winch itself, we have had an issue with one of those Sherpa winches where the winch solenoid box packed up. So it wouldn't winch. I think it was out. Or well, anyway, it wouldn't winch one way. In the end, it found out found out that it was actually they don't have solenoids. They've got a contactor arrangement in there, and one of the terminals had vibrated and broken off, essentially off the coil. So um, we got a new one of those under warranty from them, um, and it's been fine since. So we do have a spare one just in case. We do have two winches, remember, and a spare controller as well. So if you haven't worked out yet, it's always a really good idea to run your rig a lot in the warranty period <laughs> do everything with your staff during the warranty period because yeah otherwise you're going to be paying for it yourself when it runs out of warranty three years yeah. when you haven't done it yeah so, uh, so yeah and the last thing on our list the we, lucky last was a little controversial in the end because we didn't know well you you checked and yeah. it didn't there was not one that fitted our truck. No, there wasn't. There wasn't anything available. But anyway, it was the cab air filter that Carl made. made. So I made a, an air filter. We've done a whole video on that to stop any air coming into the cab that's dirty or pollen or so on. The trucks don't have a filter as standard and there's no real position for the filter. No. They do have one now. I think it was Ryko, and it bolts on the front wall exactly how we've done ours. They've got exactly the same thing but just in a more cheaper version that bolts yeah. and unbolts and so on, where ours is a washable, um, more complicated system, a dearer system, bigger filter. We're talking 300 compared to, oh, I think it was 25 no, or 55? No, no, they have 70, 70, 75, 70 yeah, okay. $70 filter they've got, yeah. which is a throwaway item. Yeah. Where ours was hundreds, but it's washable, reusable. Yes. And so, so save the world. So, yeah, that <laughs> save the world, yes. Save the world. <laughs> so that, that's been working fine. We haven't been on any super dusty roads, admittedly, but to test it. But um, when we last, uh, when I last took the front off, it was all dusty in the, on the filter itself. So it has been stopping a lot of it. Yes. And our vents haven't become dusty. No, they haven't. They're no. all clean since yeah. I cleaned them. Still, they just stay clean. And there's no leaves in there. No leaves. <laughs> none of that stuff. So that has been working well. Yeah. So they are the things that we have changed in our nearly four years of travel. 
if you've got any questions about something that we haven't covered yeah. that you'd like to know about, please drop us a line and yeah, you know, leave a comment. We may put another Q and A video together. Yeah. Also, I'll put any of the videos that we have referenced into a playlist. It will be displayed at the end on our end card so that all you have to do is click on that and you'll have all those videos yeah. available so you don't have to go fishing. So we've covered most of those things in somehow, yeah. generally in some video form, like the solar panels when I was ripping them off and all of that sort of thing. Yeah. So yeah, there's some good information there. Yeah. And it doesn't just apply to us and our exact setup it's a general thing that will apply to most people yes yeah that's right it doesn't have to be a truck no definitely not you know so. or or even just a caravan it's, it's just long-term yeah. touring and yeah. that's the yeah. things that get used and wear out yep so yeah, things to think about hope we've been helpful hope you enjoyed it and hope you get some good information or some thoughts out of it that can help you guys in your travels and if you'd like to help us more with our videos you know check out our patreon hell yeah for five dollars you know a month you can help us keep creating yes yep and i can tell you well actually no carl needs to tell you we've got some great things happening so we've been a little bit busy lately but um we've got some super super adventures coming up we can't tell you exactly uh what's happening yet yeah. until it all goes through but you'll know when it happens that our adventures are just beginning and they're going to be expanded well expanded <laughs> in the up and coming uh, months to be hey yeah yep. will be the start of yep. lots of big things happening for us yep so stick around and yeah yep keep on giving us those thumbs yep. up stay we subscribed really do appreciate keep watching yeah because there's some good stuff coming and it's not the normal run-of-the-mill stuff like a lot of others, you know what I mean? This is so... Oh yeah, we're, we're not trying to con you. <laughs> no, no, this is totally different. Completely different. Some of you yeah. might not like it. Possibly. But, you can't please everyone. But anyway, thanks for watching. we we'll see you around. See ya! We had issues with our solar panels on our rooftop tent. They were a flexible design... Yeah, we're on the van. Oh. Shit. <laughs> Scratch that. We also, um, <laughs> okay, that was pretty good, except you said particular, particular, particular. Cut this bit. Okay. And then when we were early days. Back in the van in Melbourne in the terrible weather, we also discovered early on. I already said that, didn't I? Don't know. Oh. Yeah, the early days. Yeah. Start again. Cut that. Cut, cut, cut. <laughs> uh, what else? Along with issues? Uh, oh, your bloody we... ARB, throw it in the bin. Uh, throw away. Compressor. compressor. So we had the ARB compressors. Yeah. Like Catherine speaking. On the cupboards, like. So, along with the, uh, when we had our, our flat made up for our pull out kitchen, we also had another little mod done. So the awning flap is like a little V that Carl had made and we put it in the middle of the awning. On the sail track. Yeah, it was. Not in the middle of the okay. awning. We put it on the sail track on the awning and it just helps tension everything down to our 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 poles. Yep. And it's been great in the wind. We've really enjoyed having it. Yeah, we used to struggle with our electric awning. Oh my god. So we're not gonna go into depth on everything, are we? No, I'm just well, checking. Just a bit. We yeah, can just take checking. pictures. Yeah, just checking. Oh my gosh. Why does it have to be the noisiest that? Hmm. We could shut that window. The whale tail. Still sweating, I'm getting warm here. Got about, oh. And then still.
was saying about the angles, uh, the fridge has gas struts. It's a sliding system that comes out and drops forward, doesn't tilt. it? It's a tilt, tilt, tilt fridge slide. Yep. And right from the beginning, I couldn't pull the fridge down. Like No, you couldn't lift it up. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I have trouble pulling it down. Yeah, so. so uh, Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. If you want a reminder, hit the bell. And remember, we always love a thumbs up. If you'd like to be more involved, check out our Patreon page or our website.